If you have a small size network or want to access only some services from the network, you can use the host's file for the name resolution. But if you have a medium or large size network or want to access multiple services from the network, you cannot use the host's file for the name resolution. Let's take an example to understand it. Suppose, you have a small network of five computers. Computers do not access any service from the internet or external networks. They access only the resources available inside the network. Since computers do not access anything from external networks, you can configure and use the host's file on each computer. You need to create and manage only four records in each host's file. If the IP address or name of a computer changes, you need to manually update the host's files on all computers to reflect the change. Managing a few files or records is simple and possible. But if you have a medium or large size network, you have to create and manage thousands of records in the host's file of each system. That is a tough task. You have to spend most of your time in managing these files or records. If you access the internet, the situation becomes worse. There are millions of websites on the internet. You need to create a record for each website in the host's file of each system. If the IP address of any website changes, you need to manually update the host's files on all computers to reflect the change. That is a practically impossible task. The solution to this problem is to deploy a dedicated computer for the name resolution service on the network. The dedicated computer will perform only one task that is resolving names with IP addresses. Since it will resolve names with IP addresses, we can call it a resolver computer. In simple words, a resolver computer is a computer that resolves names with IP addresses on the network at the fastest possible speed. It can be a DNS server or a system that is configured to communicate with DNS servers to resolve IP addresses. Based on the size and requirement, a network can have a single or multiple DNS servers. For example, the internet the largest computer network uses thousands of DNS servers. If a network has only one DNS server and does not use external DNS servers, the role of the resolver system and the DNS server is the same. In this situation, network computers can directly communicate with the DNS server for name resolution. Since the DNS server directly resolves queries, it also works as a resolver system. If a network has multiple DNS servers or uses external DNS servers, the role of the resolver system and the DNS server is different. In this situation, network computers do not directly communicate with DNS servers for name resolution. They send queries to the resolver system and the resolver system communicates with DNS servers to solve queries. In a network, a resolver computer performs the following tasks. Let's understand these tasks in detail. It removes the burden of managing records in the host's file from other computers. Once a resolver system is configured, other computers of the network do not need to maintain records in their host's files. It reduces the number of DNS server's IP addresses you need to configure on each network system. Suppose, your network uses multiple DNS servers, without a resolver system, you need to configure the IP address of all DNS servers on all computers. But with the resolver system, you only need to configure the resolver system's IP address on each computer. It improves the network's performance and efficiency. If the resolver system is configured, only the resolver computer communicates with DNS servers. Other computers don't need to use their hardware resources to communicate with DNS servers to resolve queries. Let's take an example to understand how this process works. Suppose, a system wants to know the IP address of google.com. For this, it first checks the host's file. If it finds an entry associated with the name google.com, it uses the IP address mentioned in the entry to access google.com. If it doesn't find an entry in the host's file, it checks the file that stores the IP address of the resolver system. Linux stores the IP address of the resolver system in the slash etc slash resolve.conf file. If this file has the IP address of the resolver system, it creates a query to know the IP address associated with the name google.com and sends that query to the resolver system. If the resolver system is a DNS server, it checks its database, finds the IP address associated with the name google.com creates a reply message that includes the IP address associated with the name google.com, and sends that message back to the system which sent the query message. If the resolver system is not a DNS server, then it forwards the query to all configured DNS servers in a sequence until it gets the IP address of the name it is looking for. Once it gets the IP address of the name, it does not send the query to the next DNS server for that name. Usually, resolver systems are also configured to cache the result. If caching is enabled, the resolver system saves a copy of all replies it receives from DNS servers. Next time, if it receives a query for the same name, instead of forwarding the query to DNS servers, 
it uses locally saved copies to answer the query. The sender system learns the IP address of Google.com from the reply message it receives from the resolver system. Just like DNS servers, you can configure multiple resolver systems on the network. Network computers check them in the defined sequence until they get the answer to their queries. Once they get the answer, they don't send the same query to the next resolver system. It allows you to deploy multiple resolver systems as a backup in a sequence. Let's take an example. Suppose you have two resolver systems. IP addresses of these systems are 10.0.0.1 and 2. You want to use the first resolver system as the main resolver system and the second resolver system as the backup resolver system. For this, you need to configure the IP address of the first resolver system on network computers as the primary resolver system and the IP address of the second resolver system as the secondary resolver system. Network computers will use the primary resolver system to resolve queries. If the primary resolver computer fails or loose connectivity, they will use the secondary resolver system to resolve their queries. Linux saves the resolver system's IP address in the slash etc slash resolve.conf file. It uses the name server directive to save the resolver system's IP address. If multiple resolver systems are configured, it will save their IP addresses in the sequence. In this sequence, the first IP address belongs to the primary resolver system. The second IP address belongs to the secondary resolver system and so on. You can edit or update these IP addresses in two ways, by using Network Manager's tools or by directly editing this file. Let's understand both methods in detail. Red Hat Linux uses Network Manager as the default daemon process for managing and configuring all networking-related settings. Network Manager provides three tools to configure network settings. These tools are NMCLI, NMTUI, and NM Connection Editor. NMCLI is the command line tool to manage network connections. NMTUI is the curses-based utility. You can use it on both CLI and desktop. NM Connection Editor is a desktop utility. You can use it only on the desktop environment. You can use any one tool from these tools to configure or change network settings. Let's use NMTUI utility to edit a connection. Select the connection you want to edit. At this time, this connection is configured to get IP configuration from the DHCP server. To manually configure the DNS server's IP address, first, we have to change the configuration type to manual. Now we can manually assign an IP configuration to this connection. We can't use a connection without an IP address. Let's assign an IP address first. Now we can configure the DNS server or resolver system's IP address. Let's assign an IP address. Since it is the first IP address, it will work as the primary DNS server or the resolver system. As I have already mentioned, a resolver system can be a DNS server or a system that is configured to communicate with configured DNS servers. If it is a DNS server, it will resolve the query from its database. If it is configured to communicate with DNS servers, it will forward the query to all configured DNS servers in a sequence until it finds the answer. If you want to configure the secondary DNS server or resolver system's IP address, you can use the add option. Let's assign one more IP address here. It will be the IP address of the primary DNS server or resolver system. It will be the IP address of the secondary DNS server or resolver system. Save the configuration. Use the back button to access the main screen. Network Manager saves the configuration in the file but it does not apply changes to the active connection. To apply changes, we need to restart the connection. For this, select the second option. Select the connection you want to restart, deactivate the active connection, and activate it again. Quit the tool. Network Manager saves each connection setting in a configuration file in the slash etc slash sysconfig slash network script directory. It uses the connection name as the file name after the ifcfg prefix. For example, we edited the connection named Wired Connection 1. The name of its configuration file will be ifcfg Wired Connection 1. Let's check this file. This is the IP configuration we assigned to this connection. These are the DNS servers or resolver systems IP addresses. 
This is the IP address of the first or primary DNS server. This is the IP address of the secondary DNS server. When we activate or reactivate the connection, Network Manager pushes these IP addresses in the ResolveConf file. To verify it, let's check the ResolveConf file again. As you can see here, this file has been updated to use the DNS servers or resolver systems we configured recently. Linux dynamically updates this file from the network configuration. Because Linux dynamically updates this file from the network configuration, you should not update this file directly. If you directly update this file, your changes will be overwritten the next time when you will activate or reactivate a connection. To understand it practically, let's edit this file and configure the resolver system's IP address manually. Replace these IP addresses with any other IP addresses. Save the file. Use the cat command to verify the changes. As we can see here, the resolver.conf file has been updated successfully. Right now, it is pointing to manually updated DNS servers. But it will do this only until we don't reactivate a connection. As soon as we will reactivate or activate a connection, it will be overwritten again to point to the name servers configured in the connection. To verify it let's reactivate the connection we recently configured. To reactivate the connection, you can use the NMT UI utility again. After reactivating the connection, check the resolve.conf file again. As you can see here, this file has been overwritten again to point to the DNS servers configured in the connection. Because of this, you should always use Network Manager's tools to update the DNS servers or resolver system's IP addresses. That's all for this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.